Every weekday, 15 million newspapers come roaring off the presses in Britain. Every Sunday, more than 25 million papers are sold. And each week, top women's magazines sell 10 million copies. Yesterday's events, tomorrow's history, today's sensation. The world's life story, printed at nearly 700 copies a minute, for you to read all about it. But millions of readers turn, first of all, not to what happened yesterday, but what's going to happen today. Astrology, your horoscope. What the stars foretell helps to sell newspapers. It isn't only the film studios and the slimming experts who know there's money in heavenly bodies. Do the stars really affect your life? Thousands believe they do. Astrology goes back at least 7,000 years when it was practiced by the Hindus. And here in the British Museum is modern astrologer John Naylor. This yellow tablet is clay, dating back to the 6th century BC. Here in the Babylonian language are the lucky and unlucky days for doing various things. Horoscope charts line the walls of Mr. Naylor's office, joining company with maps of the stars and all the rest of the paraphernalia of the modern astrologer. He is the son of R. H. Naylor, who was the first writer of a regular astrological newspaper column. Dr. William Lilly, who foretold the end of Charles I, published the first almanac of predictions in Britain in 1659. Old Moore, did you know his name was Dr. Francis Moore? Started up 38 years later, and his almanac has been appearing ever since. In John Naylor's consulting rooms in the West End of London, he gets inquiries and gives advice to people in every walk of life. He writes every day in a newspaper with a huge circulation. Mr. Naylor, do you really believe the stars can affect people's lives? Well, I wouldn't be an astrologer if I didn't. There's a very definite relationship between our stars and what happens to us. The Earth is just a very small speck of dust floating in a very large universe, and it's subject to all sorts of forces from outside. Does that mean that everybody's fate is mapped out and they can't escape from it? To a great extent, yes. But if we're forewarned of the type of experience we're likely to have and take reasonable precautions, a happier and more successful life will result. Now, why is it that an astrologer hasn't won the pool so far? Probably because they weren't born lucky. Not everybody goes for the stars in a big way. The Reverend John Fleetwood, vicar of Canvey Island, has been writing about astrology in his parish magazine. What did you say about it, Mr. Fleetwood? Well, I said that it was a lot of silly, trashy, superstitious nonsense. That what people need is a living faith in the true God. This somewhat oriental-looking building is where they make a study of the stars by the time-honored method of looking at them through a telescope. And that's not astrology, it's astronomy. This is the observatory at Hurstmonceux in Sussex, to which the oldest scientific establishment in Britain, the Royal Observatory, moved from Greenwich. The method is old, but the telescopes themselves are ultra-modern. If you want to be technical, this is known as the reversible transit circle. What else do people do here after they've mounted these broad and rather awe-inspiring steps to knowledge? Greenwich gives the time to anybody in the world who wants it. Hurstmonceux has been renamed the Royal Greenwich Observatory, so that the world won't think it's being fobbed off with mean time from some small local branch. All sorts of tests are being carried out here on watches whose accuracy means much more than just a question of being on time or late for a date. Navigation watches undergo water tests. There's a rotating machine for testing watches that wind automatically. There are pressure tests for watches used by divers. And of course, there are valuable relics. This chronometer was used by Captain Cook, who discovered Australia. There's a repair shop 
where highly skilled mechanics work on the overhauling and adjusting of thousands of navigation watches and marine and survey chronometers. So in Sussex, in the precincts of this ancient castle, they pursue the work of an establishment that came into existence as long ago as 1675. It was founded by King Charles II. It's so unfortunate that he's remembered less for his serious work on navigation and more for his frivolous fun with Nell Gwynne. From the solar department, here's an idea of the sort of thing they see, tongues of flame leaping into space from the sun. This is the building that deals with that reversible transit circle mentioned earlier. The instrument inside the building is used to determine the position of the sun and the stars and the planets. The readings are accurate to one thousandth part of a second. It's hard to imagine such accuracy in connection with such unlimited space. Now the telescope is being adjusted for observation of the stars. And the kind of picture it gives is this. But here's the very last word in apparatus for studying the wonders of the universe. And it's having an effect on your future. It's a man-made spider's web that captures the secrets of what happens, not millions, but millions of millions of miles away. It brings to Earth sounds that were made when time began, when stars were born. And it brings back also the sounds of the latest Earth-born satellites. Six bogies at each end and a pivot turn a structure of towers and bridge and reflector bowl weighing some 2,000 tons, built so precisely that it moves at the touch of a button, yet stands like a rock in a gale. It's the radio telescope at Jodrell Bank in the English county of Cheshire, the first of its kind in the world. It brings to the men at the controls news of what is going on in outer space, far beyond the range of anything the most powerful telescope can bring to the eye. The bowl itself, built like a huge deep saucer, is 800 tons of steel plates. It has what looks like an old-fashioned street lamp in the middle. These are the aerial and its reflector designed to pick up the weakest radio signals from any direction. They are the key to the newest science, radio astronomy. This scientific marvel has cost 150,000 pounds, but despite an appeal by Manchester University for whom Jodrell Bank was built, only a fraction of the cost has so far been raised. Everybody has seen the moon, but have you ever listened to it? These sounds, brought back by the giant telescope, are bouncing off the moon. And one of these days, the first man will be leaving Earth to land on the moon by Rocket Express. <laughs>